Okay, we have here another integral from Caltech Math Meet, finals number 25. We have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus x squared over 1 plus e to the x to the 2025 times cosine x dx. Okay, this is the kind of problem that we've done quite a few times on the channel. The thing to notice in the denominator here, we actually have an even function with this whole thing just because we're squaring the x. And... This isn't an odd function, but this, the exponent on the e, this here is an odd function. And because we have it set up like this with symmetric bounds, this is one we could do very quickly, but let's do it out and see what happens. So what I'm going to do on this, we want to do a substitution for u equal to minus x, then solving for, I mean, I can bring the minus on the other side, take a derivative, and we get dx is minus du. I'll go ahead and substitute. First, what's going to happen with the minus x here, it's going to reverse the sign on our bound. So now it's going to be minus infinity here and then positive infinity for this one. Next, for the numerator, let's get a value. Let me just write this so it's clear. We have x is minus u. When you plug in minus u, it's going to get squared and we get back the same thing. So we're just going to have minus, sorry, e to the minus u squared. And here we plug in. Again, cosine's even. So when we plug that in, it's just going to become like this part's going to be cosine u. We have e with the minus sign here. It's going to become e minus u to the 2025. And then we're going to have a minus sign on the du. But what I can do is use this minus sign to reverse the sign. Make that a plus. Make that a minus. And make that one go away. Okay, now I don't think I need any of this. So we'll get rid of all that. What I want to do next is clean up the denominator so we can get it to look more like what we had originally. I can just multiply in this with a different sign. I can multiply in e to the u2025 cosine of u. Do the same thing in the numerators. So we're just multiplying by one. And then we'll just distribute in. When we do this in the denominator, this times this is going to create a one because we get a zero in the exponent. So we'll just reorder it and write a one for this term here. And then when we multiply this times this, we just get back this thing here. And then from here, all I want to do is a variable change. Let's change this all back to x. In the definite integral, it's not going to change the value if we change the variable. So let's just do that. And then here, what we've done is now the denominator here is identical to this. We also have the same bounds. So let's put labels on the integrals. Label i. We'll label the original integral i, and this thing here is still i. And then we'll just add these two copies of the integral together. So we're going to have 2i. We can put it together now that we have the same, everything over the same denominator. So everything's over this thing here. And then when I add the numerators, we actually have this in common, right? So let's pull, let's factor that out. So we'll have this e minus x squared term. And then like think of it like a one here. So this is going to become one plus e to the x 2025 cosine x. But then what happens, this is going to cancel here with this. And we're just left with this piece. This is kind of what I was referring to at the beginning, where we know when we have the odd exponent here and the even term in the numerator, everything is going to go away and we're just left with this. We can divide off two, so we have a one half in front here. But then because we have symmetric bounds, we can get rid of this and make this a zero. If you want, that's really optional right there. It doesn't help really at all, but I'm just going to do it to show it. So when we change that to a zero, we bring a two up front, but we already have this, so that's just a one. And so doing that, let me just clean up so we see what we have. We've got the integral from 0 to 8. <laughs> no, not to 8. It's actually an integral from 0 to infinity, e minus x squared dx. But what is this thing right here? It's the Gaussian integral. So we know what this is, just kind of memorizing the value. This thing's going to be just square root of pi over 2. The reason I said it didn't matter over here is if we had it from minus infinity to infinity, that's just square root of pi, but we had the one half. So either way, my final solution on this is just going to be square root of pi over 2, and that's it. Okay, so there you go. I know I've done this type of problem like 20 times, but this was a pretty good example of it, including the Gaussian integral, kind of a complicated exponent there. So not bad. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day.